Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the week thus far. It's time for the news. <laughs> The province is warning anyone who may have been to the strip club teasers. They may have been exposed to the measles virus. The owners have still yet to say if they will change the name of the strip club to measlers. <laughs> the Cube, the controversial replacement for the old Market Square stage, has won a 2014 Governor General's Medal for Architecture. In their comments, the jurors wrote, Its innovative and flexible design allows for constant transformation from a stage that works to one that doesn't work at all, to a hazard to performers. <laughs> Brian Timmerman of the Exchange Biz said complaints evaporated in 2013 after all the complainers were crushed underneath a collapsing aluminum curtain. <laughs> the CanWest building at Portage and Main has been sold, and the sale includes the gravel lot that's next to it, which has led to a lot of excited speculation about the idea of tearing down the CanWest building and expanding the gravel lot. <laughs> This past week, Gord Steves, better known as Cal Gordo, <laughs> with his Khaleesi and 100 of his blood riders, rode to City Hall and declared his intention to rule as overlord of Winnipeg and to be the stallion that mounts the city. He then promised to put Lord Samuel Cates' head on a pike. House Wash Elisa Lees' raven has yet to be reached for comment. Meanwhile, House Fielding set a bus on fire. This year, this year at the Calgary Stampede, crazy concessions are set to be unveiled, such as scorpion top pizza and crocodile sliders. Winnipeg's Red River X clearly has some work to do, as last year's classics, such as smuggled tall boy filled with turkey gravy and bacon-wrapped wad of gum with cigarette butts, may not be enough to impress the wealth of Manitoban foodies ditching their children at the lost child tent before going to the beer barn. <laughs> Whew. Royal fever has hit Memphis, Tennessee, as there have been sightings of Prince William and his brother, Prince Harry. No one knows the true origin, origin of royal fever or how the royal family contracted it, but some speculate it may have originated at the Measlers Strip Club in Winnipeg. <laughs> According to a recent poll, nearly half of those who live in New Jersey want to move out of New Jersey, while the other half are not sure how polls work. A miniature horse who fell into a sinkhole in Illinois has been heroically rescued by local firefighters. When local full-sized horses saw the miniature horse trapped in the hole, the leader stated, this is why everyone hates you, Gary. <laughs> to, which, to which the miniature horse replied, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words, oh, you're gone. <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence confessed that she drunkenly barfed on Madonna's stairs during a post-Oscars party. The week thus far, as writing staff confessed that this kind of turned us all on, including Dana. <laughs> a dead minky whale that was washed ashore was disgraced when someone graffiti tagged its bloated carcass. To make matters even worse, the whale washed up on the shorelines of New Jersey. <laughs> because earlier, we made fun of New Jersey. It's also partly my fault. Uh, <laughs> restorations are being considered for Michelangelo's David, as the famous statue contains fissures and cracks in the ankles that may make it susceptible to collapse. Should the procedure advance, David has put in a request for a little more length and girth. <laughs> I've been seeing that picture all week, too. <laughs> uh. Just, we'll just wait. <laughs> All right. 
Last week, porn streaming giant Pornhub ran a promotion for its users, stating that for every 100 videos watched, it would plant one tree. Although it seems like a nice gesture, many people believe this is just Pornhub's way of trying to replace all of the wasted tissue paper its users discard every second of every hour of every day. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, recently the topic of race in America has once again come to the forefront, with the ugly specter of racism rearing its head in a variety of different areas. Here to comment is WTF's own sensitive affairs correspondent, Dr. Bill O'Reilly. Yeah. Daniel, now thank you for having me. Now, these days, people claim to see institutionalized racism everywhere. From millionaire white men who own ranches saying Negroes might be happier as slaves, to billionaire white men who own basketball teams suggesting black people might be happier not attending their games. It's crazy. There is no racism. None. So the, like, the very first thing you said is completely wrong already and pretty much very offensive. I, you've done a great job, Bill. Well, I'm happy to have that debate, Daniel. From Clive and Bundy being persecuted for what he said to NBA club owner Donald Sterling being persecuted for what he said, it's enough to make you wonder, whatever happened to the First Amendment? The mainstream media goes ahead and takes the words that were said by them and claims that they're words they said? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize we were in communist Russia, Dan. And now the NAACP wants to take away Donald Sterling's Achievement Award? The NBA wants to take away his team? What, for hating black people? Ridiculous. I thought this was America. What about a constitutional right to an NBA franchise? These people were convicted by their own words, you know? Don't you think they should take some responsibility? You know, like he said anti-black sentiments to a woman who is part black. And you see, Dan, that's the difference between you and I. You see, you, see a, you say a black person like their color defines them. I don't. I don't see a black woman, or even a part black woman, or even a woman. I see a sperm receptacle for a white man. <laughs> no different than a rag. Racism is dead, Daniel, but sadly, something far, far worse has taken its place. Racistism. Racistism? <laughs> Intolerance of racists. It's horrible and it needs to stop. Look, both of these men are good, strong family men. Clive and Bundy has a huge family. And Donald Sterling, he didn't even say those comments to his wife, just his girlfriend. Maybe that's because his wife is white? Possibly, who can say? Look, <laughs> if I can't hate who I want to hate and act on that hatred and have the government enforce my right to hate, I don't know if that's my America anymore. <laughs> I think we need to move beyond the racial divisions that divide us. Things like white people, black people, Asian people, aboriginal. Daniel, why not just people? I think that's actually the first thing you've said that makes sense tonight, Bill. Of course, we would still need some way to quantify who is who. So maybe if we just went with white people and not people. <laughs> You should, you should probably just leave, I think. That's probably a good time for First that. they came for the racist, Dan. All right, just get First. out of here. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly, everybody. <laughs> and that is the news, everyone. Oh, yeah. Well, we uh, had a request the other day. People were interested in finding out what the writers do on our spare time since we had a week off. We thought maybe we'd send a few cameras out with a few of the writers just to kind of see what sort of things happen in their lives. <laughs>